I personally know how difficult it is. I, I don't know, I just, I can't look at it because it's just, it's, it's really hard for me to see. I am terrified. This week has brought a lot of anxiety for me and I don't really feel comfortable sharing this because I feel like as the CEO of a company and as someone who is the face of a company and all of that, you feel like you can't share your vulnerabilities and you always have to put on a strong face. But I wanna be very open and authentic with you and let you guys know that I am just as scared, if not more, than you are. There's a few reasons why. Uh, first and foremost, I've been following the coronavirus since January. I've been following it religiously. Um, right now I'm 38 weeks pregnant. From January I was in third trimester and I've just been following it in the middle of the night, watching so much about it, following what's happening in Wuhan and then following what's been happening throughout the world. But it didn't really seem real until the past couple of weeks where you know, there's cases in California, cases in my city, and now the government has issued lockdown and quarantines and schools have been canceled and all that. And so then it was real. I am also 38 weeks pregnant and you do so many things. You take so much precaution when you're pregnant. You know, you don't drink too much coffee. You make sure you take your prenatal vitamins. You make sure you go to your checkups. You don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't do X, Y, and Z. And I do know that there's not a lot of evidence or data on babies and the coronavirus, but you know there are some articles out there saying an infant has died from the coronavirus or you just get fearful of whether your baby is going to have permanent lung damage and you do so much to protect yourself and be healthy, but this is something that nobody could have anticipated, right? And to be giving birth in a time like this there's so much uncertainty, even like, will there be even a hospital bed for me? The nurses or doctors, like, are they working with other patients who have the coronavirus and they're just coming in from room to room? Are you gonna be infected at the hospital? I mean, there's just so many questions and I think labor is stressful enough. And then with this epidemic that nobody really knows about, it's also very, very stressful. Third, running a business <laughs> is not easy by itself. But running a business in a situation like this is also just as terrifying. A very, very fortunate banish. We're still running, we're still shipping, we're still working. Our team is remote, so that's been really, really great. But just seeing how other businesses have all of a sudden have had to close their doors or lay off all their workers or cut hours for their employees or whatnot has been also very stressful to see. You know, it's kind of like you don't want to know and you don't want to see it, but you know it's happening because you can't help but feel really, really bad for those who need the money and need the hours to support their families. And, you know, this thing was completely out of anyone's control and to see them struggle really, truly breaks my heart. Also, I lost a lot of money in the stock market just this week, just the past couple of weeks. When the coronavirus kind of started hitting the US, I was like, oh, we're on a downturn. You know, um, I'm gonna put more money in it and I do have a lot of my personal savings in the stock market and it's significant. <laughs> I'm not gonna go into the numbers, but it's very significant. I do some investing and you know, the stock market historically has returned 8% every year. And so I was thinking, you know, I'm going to be all smart and stuff and invest in it now, threw a ton of money in. And then that was the Friday before the Monday, the Monday that everything went down and everything just keeps going down, down, down. And you keep seeing red, red, red. And you can't help but think that, you know, all this money I worked for and saved up for, and all of a sudden just throwing it in there and then just seeing it kind of disappear. You can't help but blame yourself. And especially for me, it was only a day difference. You know, I just felt like I should have waited one day, but again, nobody could have anticipated that. Yeah, there's just a lot that's going on all at the same time and being 30 weeks pregnant, not sleeping in general, because there's pregnancy insomnia. There's just also a lot of symptoms <laughs> with being pregnant and then all the stuff that's going on has gotten me a little 
bit worried. And I think another thing that has been going on too is and I, wanted to I am share a what has freak, been helping like me a few weeks ago this because people hopefully were not taking it will this help virus you. seriously. And I just wanted to control everybody and what they were doing. I was like, I want to control the airlines. I want to control the government. I want to force certain shutdowns and certain quarantines. And then you see people on Instagram like traveling the world and still going to nightclubs and still doing all of that. And that just gave me so much anxiety because when I can't control a situation and I knew it was going to get bad. I knew it was going to get bad because I saw what happened in Wuhan because I've been following it since January. I don't know, I just got mad. And then I got mad at the president because I think he was trying to flood money in first instead of quarantining everybody. Yeah, and I just felt like we waited too long. And of course, I can't control it. You know, my family and myself, we were all staying in, but other people are going out. And you know, you just get kind of mad when you see that. I'm going to be sharing how I have survived this week and how I am going to survive the next couple of months because yeah, I think we're all going through a lot of anxiety and we're all going through stuff. You know, your anxieties and problems may not be exactly like mine, but I'm sure you're going through your own set of problems and we can all use this to help us. So the first thing is the media. And I always say the media and propaganda is something we need to take into consideration with a grain of salt. And I think it's very, very important for my future children to be able to learn how to think on their own and to think for themselves and not just read a book or not just watch the news or not just listen to someone speak and think that they're God and they know everything that's going on. I think it's very, very important for people not to be sheep and for them to make their own decisions for themselves. Now, the media definitely brings a lot of stress and anxiety. And for me, you know, during this time of pregnancy insomnia, I would just be reading the news and getting down this rabbit hole that was very, very not healthy for my mental health. And what I have to realize and what we all have to realize is the media is owned by these humongous corporations. So I did some research, AT&T, Comcast, Walt Disney, Viacom, Fox. So these five major news corporations own 90% of the media. I'm not saying what the media is reporting is inaccurate, but if you guys make YouTube channels or do any kind of content marketing, you know that your goal is to get eyeballs, is to get clicks, is to use clickbaity titles, is to get basically people to view your article or watch your news, right? And so the way to do that is to, you know, have things that are very sensational. And of course, they're always going to report the worst of the worst scenarios. And yes, I do understand perfectly, you know, healthy people have died. You know, I told you that I read the article that the infant had died, you know, People are dying, yes, we get it, but also they're not always reporting positive news. So I think it's really important for us to know that because otherwise you can get down this rabbit hole and it can really affect your mental health. And right now we don't need our mental health to be affected. And I think it's like everything in life. There's propaganda everywhere. You know, there's always people telling you stuff and it's really up to you to decide whether you want to listen to it and believe it or take it with a grain of salt. So I think it's really important that we're kind of limiting the amount of media we're in, we're taking in. If we need a break from it, it's okay to take a break from it. As long as we're aware of what's going on and, you know, being safe. But there is a difference between that and just climbing down this rabbit hole of a lot of negative news. And I always think of media and I always think of propaganda as things that have happened in history. For example, you know, in World War II, Hitler was the leader, right, of the Third Reich. And he told everybody that, you know, the Jewish people are bad, that these ethnic groups and these uh, sexual orientations are bad and they're destroying the country. He's just said all this stuff, right? And people believed him back then in the 1940s. If you think about it, People were sheep who believed, right, this charismatic leader. And it doesn't mean what he said was true or right, but people believed and it caused a lot of damage um, in world history because of that. And so I always think of, of it like that, like you have to choose who you believe and you can't be swept away by, you know, sheep. Like you can't just be swept away by what everyone else is doing. And I know everyone else is panicking and buying toilet paper and buying out the grocery store and, acting like sheep for, I mean, I'm just saying like everyone is kind of like jumping on the bandwagon of everything and nobody is thinking on their own. And we all have to realize that we need to take the information in and think on our own. 
um, and realize that what is stated out there may not always be true. So number two is everything is up to interpretation. And this is why people go to law school and spend $200,000 on law school and take the bar exam because the language is up to a lot of interpretation and we interpret things differently. And how you interpret things is how you can react to them and how it affects your mental health. So something for me was acne. I've had acne all my life. You guys know my acne story and I interpreted acne. Acne to me equaled ugly. Acne to me meant that I needed to hide and stay away from everyone. And this was before, you know, the quarantine days. And acne told me that I wasn't worthy, that I wasn't going to be loved, that I wasn't going to be accepted. And that was my interpretation, right? But that absolutely means nothing. That was my interpretation of the language. That was my interpretation of what acne meant. But nobody told me, you know, nobody told me that. I just interpreted that. Or even if someone told me, I don't have to believe it, you know? So it's, it's like with anything in life. Sometimes we think, oh, being curvy is fat, which equals ugly or you know being short equals whatever or being tall equals whatever or being this equals whatever nobody gives you that definition you have to define things for yourself just like lawyers do right in a document they have to define the language for themselves and so it's important that we define things in the way that best suits us if i never define acne as ugly i probably would be very like a lot more confident you know when i was younger and i probably would have been more social and had more friends and just had a better life but because I defined something so negatively I lived my life around it even with this stock market stuff and the economy and everyone says they're going into a recession and all of that you know I can define myself based on the growth of my stock portfolio or I can just say you know that is those are just numbers on a screen and it doesn't mean anything unless I give it meaning you know in the Great Depression and in the 2008 recession there were a lot of instances where people jumped off buildings and killed themselves because they gave that so much meaning it's really sad what can happen when you give things that you cannot control meaning so I think it's really important that we always remind ourselves that we have the power to give to what it is in our life. And your net worth, your skin condition, how skinny you are, how many followers you have, how well your business is doing, all of that doesn't mean anything unless you give it meaning power. The third tip is there's always going to be crisis in your life. This is not gonna be the only crisis that you're gonna go through. This is not gonna be the only negative downturn that you're gonna go through in life. And I hope we don't have a pandemic like this ever again in our lifetimes, but who's to say, you know, the 1918 flu only happened 800 years ago. It could very well happen again, and it will happen again. But we will also have our own personal crises as well. You know, there's going to be breakups and divorce. People are gonna lose their jobs. There's gonna be tragedies that unfortunately you will never be able to foresee. And I hope it doesn't happen to anybody watching this video, including myself, but you know, we can't guarantee that. So this is one of many downturns that will happen in our life. We can't avoid it, but the only thing we can do is react well and react positively and be strategic in the moment instead of panicking, really thinking about what we can do and trying, trying to be as calm as possible. I know Obviously, if you're going through something, it's very, very difficult, but panicking is not helping in a lot of situations. Number four is nothing is forever. Just like, was it Maroon 5 who's saying that? Nothing is forever, don't be rude. So for good times or for bad times, nothing is forever, you guys. The good times are gonna be good, but there's gonna be bad times and they're gonna be bad and vice versa. And I always think of it as a sine curve, cosine curve, roller coaster, waves of an ocean, even, you know, going into labor, your contractions are going to come in and they're going to go out, come in and they're going to go out. And that's how life is. I also want to say, you know, I'm not a financial advisor or whatnot, but I've always been taught to live below my means. I think I'm very, very good at that. <laughs> Save money to put it in the stock market on the wrong day. But, you know, I think it's important for us to live below our means and to have a savings account because there are going to be periods where unexpectedly you get laid off or fired from a job or your company shuts down 
or just whatnot to have a little nest egg I think it doesn't hurt anybody and to save a little bit of money is good and a way you can do that is with every paycheck you get even if it's 10% just automatically deduct 10% Put it in a different account and don't touch it just so that you have that nest egg but also knowing that nothing is forever including the stock market and even though the stock has jumped significantly this week it will go back up as long as you're patient with it you don't panic and you don't sell everything right away and i thought this was really interesting because i took a prenatal class and they were just saying i remember the midwife was saying how she panicked during her first pregnancy. She wasn't prepared and she decided to undergo like, I don't know, I don't exactly remember what she did, like whether it was an epidural or she took like gas or medicine or C-section or whatever. But she said that if she hadn't panicked, she most likely would have been able to, you know, give a natural birth and have it be very successful. But because she was panicking, it went a lot longer and it went a lot worse. The thing they teach you in birthing class is to kind of breathe through the contractions and just focus on your breath during those times of extreme excruciating pain. And I think that's very, very a great analogy for what's going on now. Let's take a deep breath, let's breathe through it and know that things are gonna turn upwards, just like women giving birth. <laughs> so number five, we are also need to realize that we have been so, so, so spoiled as a generation and thinking about, oh, I can't go to my trip to Europe right now, or oh, I can't go out and party, can't throw my bachelorette or wedding this weekend or whatever. I mean, those are very, very, very minor problems to have. If you think about what the generation, our grandparents or great grandparents went through, they went through World War I, they went through the 1918 flu, and they went through the Great Depression, and they might've gone through World War II. And so their life was basically crisis mode for a really, really long time. And yet you have to think about your elders who went through all of that. So that way we have the infrastructure the safety, the economic security, all of that today. And, you know, honestly, we take it for granted. I believe this generation where we take a lot of things for granted, we can be very vain and self-centered. And so we always have to remember what the older generations did for us and as well as respect and help our elders. Even, you know, um, my grandparents and parents you know, they lived under communist China and they went through a great famine. And it just breaks my heart that every time I go see my grandparents or even my parents, you know, the way they show their love and their status is making sure that there's enough food for you at home. And so that's why every time you go, you know, to your grandparents um, or your parents, they just make you eat so much food. And, you know, I would get annoyed <laughs> that I would have to eat so much. I was like, why are you shoving food in my face all the time? But I realized it's because, you know, when they were younger, they like had to starve at times and they didn't know when their next meal was coming. And so the way to show their appreciation is by giving you a ton of food. And, you know, you don't really think about that, right? And even, you know, my mom and my dad, when they grew up, you know, food was rationed. And even when my mom was pregnant with me, she said that, you know, meat and dairy and eggs were rationed and she couldn't just go and eat eggs. Like it was more of a treat than like an essential part of her diet. And that's why I, I joke with her. I'm like, oh, that's why I have all these skin problems or that's why I have all these issues because I didn't get enough nutrients when you're pregnant. But you also have to think about, you know, what the previous generations did for us. And now it is our job and our duty as millennials to protect the older generations as best as possible. And the way to do that is not to panic, but to stay inside and away from everybody. <laughs> For Banish, it's really important that we are helping out in this situation. And again, we Banish, we're still, as of recording this video, and I'll put in the description box if anything changes, I don't know what's gonna happen because you know things are changing so, so fast. But as of recording this video, we're still shipping products. So as long as the post um, office, UPS, uh, DHL, et cetera, if they're still running, we're still running. And we're very, very grateful that, you know, we don't sell in retail stores, so we don't have to close any stores and that, you know, our products are fresh. And then a lot of the team at Banish is also remote. So we're very, very lucky for that. Um, I don't know how long the products will be in stock for. 
Um, it only takes one part of our supply chain to you know, be out of stock for a lot of other things to be in stock. So I would say, you know, if you do want the products to probably get them sooner rather than later. But we also really want to help what's going on at Banish. And so, you know, one way we can help is we're going to be donating on every order that is purchased. We're going to be donating to the World Health Organization. This money will be used into getting more supplies for medical facilities and helping with research for a vaccine and all of that. So that's one way we can help. But another way we can help is also to do self-care at home. I think that is so important. Just stay at home, do self-care at home, use your banisher at home, <laughs> use your pumpkin enzyme mask at home, you know, just stay at home. I think that's kind of the best that we can do. There's a lot that was said in this video and I just wanted to share how I've been feeling and ways I've been coping with this and hopefully it has helped you. I know that we can all feel scared but we also have to realize that this is not gonna last forever. There's so much good news happening in the rest of the world. For example, China has reopened all their Apple stores and um, I believe their Starbucks is opening too. And there's just very few cases now in China. They've kind of settled it. So hopefully we'll be there in a month or so. And the best thing we can do is do self-care at home, stay home if you do have the spare income to donate to organizations like the World Health Organization or any communities um, and also support small local businesses. I personally know a lot of entrepreneurs that have completely shut down their businesses. Everything that they work for, everything that they sacrifice for, you know, their homes that they personally guarantee, you know, all their savings account has diminished and gone away overnight. They've had to lay off o over 100 people at their companies, all of that simply because they cannot afford to operate anymore. And so if there's any way you can support your local small businesses, whether it's ordering takeout from, you know, that local restaurant or buying gift cards from, you know, a local business, please, please, please try to support your local businesses um, if you do have the spare cash because yeah, it really means a lot. And I do believe that, you know, America is made of small businesses and it's everyone's dream. You know, I'm getting emotional when I talk about small businesses because every business is someone's, <laughs> getting emotional. every business is someone's dream and every business is someone's dream that they decided to take a risk for. And I personally know how difficult it is. And I don't know, I just, I can't look at it because it's just, it's it's really hard for me to see. And there's so much I wanna do to help. And um, I think if we can all just take a little bit of time to support small businesses, um, you know, um, that would be great. So, whew. but we will get through this. So to the banished soldiers, we are stronger than we ever know possible and it's only when we're faced in these kind of situations we really know how we react right it's kind of like that quote like women are like tea bags you don't know how strong they are until they're in hot water or something like you know we are so so strong and we can do this together and i've always said we've had to fight the world and we've had to learn how to be confident in our own skin which is so 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 hard now we have to fight the world with all these external circumstances that we didn't realize that was coming, but we can all get through this on the other side. So thank you all so much for supporting and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.